go, read and weep. This is in Texas. Oh. <laughs> it's a little after seven in the morning. Um, I just got up, got dressed. I mean, you can clearly see I just got up. Uh, I gotta pull the curtain real quick. Let's see. Just get ready, ready for the day. Made my bed. Oh man, gotta get out shortly. Do the pre-trip on the truck. So, yeah, I'll take you with me. Probably should do something about my hair. Hey, it's fixed. Let's go check the truck. Check airbags. Check your lights. It's working. The electrical tape sticking out. For whatever reason. That look right. Alright. We're good. Check these tires. I'm gonna thump them. Check under the trailer. Make sure all your lights are working. I'm sure nothing's out of place. It's a little low, but I've got an automatic uh, air system on the trailer, so we we'll hear it simple up here a little bit. Oh, man. I don't think it's going to rain today, but anyway. Check the light to the back. Lincoln. All working. On the other side. Oh. Now Pepper gets to go out, check to see the weather, what the weather's like. <sighs> well, one of these things last night, I need to slide my tandems. I'm tired of guessing where the holes are. Uh, so we're going to try this. I think I saw how it works. So, I want to slide it two holes. Uh, let's see. I think they said so there's one two let's go here let's go like that let's go try it little pins okay i don't think it works five bucks says i'm gonna go out there and find that thing on the ground and I don't see it. It's on the ground. <laughs> I just don't see it. Oh, look, I was right. It's on the ground. I'm pretty sure I slid it back two holes, though. I used the old method. Let's see here. Yeah, I got it. There's a stop there. There's one, two holes. Boom. So I got it. Oh, I use the old-fashioned method and uh, I just checked my my uh, holes with my holes Let me show you. okay uh, years ago at England I learned a trick so two of these holes so here to here represents one hole on the trailer so we're going to move two holes I line it up with a spot on the ground. So say you can see I line this one up with like that spot right there, right? And you slide one hole and two holes and line this up with that spot on the ground. That has worked pretty much like my entire career at this point. So yeah, there you go. Let's go away the truck. Alright, Pepper's in in her chair. Pepper. See here, little stuffed animals over there that I have for, and uh, we're gonna go away the truck. All right, breakfast of champions right here. Water. 
Uh, took me three tries to get that right this morning. So, actually, probably more than that. I don't know. So, um, I tried, you know, moving the tandems, sliding the tandems in my parking spot. And of course, you saw what happened there. I lost my my little uh, tandem stopper. Came right out. So I don't. I already don't like that thing. Um, I'll have to try to get another one. Maybe. Maybe give that one away to somebody who knows how to use it. I don't think I know how to use it. Uh, and then I went over and weighed the truck. And even though I slid it two holes, it didn't really feel like. Uh, I checked it and it only changed it by like 500 pounds or something like that. So I was still over on the back. And uh, I wanted it to be 32 on the front, 31 on the rear. Uh, and I didn't care as long as the front said 32 and the rear said 31. So. Um, but I did finally get it. I got on the scale. I did, uh, I weighed it. It was 31 front, 32 rear. I got off the scale. I slid the tandems. I got back on the scale. Nothing had changed. So apparently I, I screwed it up. So I got off the scale. I slid it again. I made sure to slide it backwards that time. And that time I got it. So three times, three third times a try. Yeah. All right, we're on our way. Uh, probably going to end up in... Uh, Las Cruces tonight, I'm pretty sure. It started out in Bernardo. Bernardo, Texas. I need to look it up. So I'm going to Las Cruces this evening. Spend the night there. Uh, I did want to talk to you guys this morning about like being safe out there. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not saying it is gonna happen. I'm not saying it's not gonna happen, but uh, I think one of the things that, that we as truck drivers kinda have to worry about is our own safety. And I don't mean, like, safety from coronavirus. I mean safety from, like, actually, like, out in the world. So, um, you know, and unfortunately, one of two things is going to happen. Either we're going to get through this, and, like, in a couple of weeks, it's all going to blow over, and everybody's going to be like, oh, my God, the end of the world's here, blah, 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 you know. Or um, we're going to run into an issue where a lot of people are out of work, and... Um, we truck drivers will become targets, not because, uh, well, we'll become targets because we're hauling freight. Um, and so anything that we have will become, uh, you know, the, the, the crime rate will probably go up a little bit and it may not, you know, I could be wrong, but, uh, in, in, a, in what I'm worried about what I'm worried about and what I should always be worried about when I'm driving is is um, somebody sneaking up behind me when I'm doing my free trip in the morning or somebody sneaking up behind me um, when I'm, you know, walking away from the truck to get something to eat at night or, or whatever, walking back to the truck or whatever. So um, just be aware of your surroundings. That, that was something I was taught when I was running pharmaceutical loads from Dallas to Houston every night, you know. That stuff is a that's high cost load. It's a high targeted load uh, for people for thieves. You know, people that sell that stuff on the black market. And so they warned me when I started doing that to watch my back. You know, if I had to get out, go to the bathroom, watch my back because um, I was a target for for uh, I was a high target. So um, if the economy does take a downturn to the point where a lot of people are out of work. Um, and the worst it apparently can get is like up to 20% of people out of work or whatever. Like that's depression era level, like, you know, 1929. So, um, you know, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to think that, that that could happen, but it could happen. That's the thing. Um, but in that case, just kind of, you know, kind of keep an eye on yourself, kind of keep an eye on your load, you know, double check things on a regular basis, you'd be surprised if you feel unsafe, doing a free trip somewhere, you know, I don't care what the DOT says, if you feel unsafe getting out of the truck um, and doing a free trip, start the truck, move the truck somewhere where you feel safe, then do your free trip, um, because it's, you know, it's more about, it's more about you than it is about anything else, and, and I may get flack for saying that, but, you know, if it comes down to, to me, you know, being alive at 
the end of my free trip or me doing my free trip before I move the truck, I'm gonna pick this the first one. So um, anyway, that's kind of it at this point. Uh, I'm just gonna keep filming throughout the day and uh, try to show you guys what's going on. Mine's on the floor for social distancing. How far are you supposed to stay apart? I'm like sitting here and I'm editing the film for today and uh, I realized I did all my filming this morning uh, when I left before I left Bernardo and then uh, I failed to like really film anything the rest of the day um, so tomorrow I'm gonna do better I promise um, wasn't really that crazy of a day I mean you know, you, you saw, like, last night what the restaurant was like. You saw the McDonald's for, like, ten, like, maybe five seconds today. Um, so, I apologize for that. That sucks. Um, I am going to say that um, I'm going to try to, like, film during the day. I'm going to try to do, like, scenery as well um, throughout the day. And then um, I'm just going to, like, edit it real quick at night and just put it out, you know. And uh, if I see something crazy, I'll try to save it on, on camera. Uh, either the, the dash cam up there, or I'll try to save it on here so that you guys can see it. Um, for right now, I'm freaking tired. It's 10 o'clock. It's like, like 9 something here in, in Las Cruces, but it's just after 10 Central Time. So, I got up about 7 uh, this morning Central Time, so I'm pretty worn out. Um, I'm going to add this to the end of the video. And then I'm going to finish the video. And that's it. So uh, I feel like there was something I was supposed to talk about at the end of this video. Oh, I know. Um, if you're out there and you're driving a truck or whatever. Uh, if you're out there and you're like, you go out to get something to eat or something like that. Going to a restaurant. Hey, thank those people too. Okay. Because as much as, as truck drivers are out here and we're keeping the country moving at this point. By making sure supplies get where they need to go. Um, there are people that are braving the, you know, COVID-19 at this, you know, out there making food for you, making food for me, you know, and, and that's the thing. So if you get a chance to, to thank those people, thank those people because they could just as easily call in sick and say, Hey, I feel sick. I'm staying home as, as they could go to work. So, um, and they're taking a risk too. So when you get a chance, pay attention to the people around you and who's keeping the economy going and then thank those people. Because um, they're the ones that are uh, keeping this world, this big old world turning at this point. So, uh, just keep that in mind. Um, I think that's it. I'll probably share a story with you tomorrow. Um, now, I'm going to share a story with you tonight real quick before I go. So, uh, my mother um, was at the store today. And she went for onions and something else. I can't remember what else she went for. But anyway, she went to the store and... While she was at the store, a phone rang, and a lady started wailing and crying. And apparently, her mother died today. And apparently, her mother died of the virus. And mom said that she she heard the lady go, "I I can't believe this. I just talked to her yesterday." So, uh, I I don't know what's happening as far as the virus is concerned. There's so much, so much out there as far as news is concerned. Um, I've seen reports that China's closed their their um, coronavirus uh, hospitals. I've seen reports that Israel's close to a vaccine. I've seen uh, reports that in India there's certain medicines that are uh, uh, that are that are they're having very good success with treating um, coronavirus with the medicines or whatnot. But I've seen you know like the worst day as far as deaths are concerned in Italy. You know um, I've seen the cases in America rise again. Uh, we're at like 19,000 today um cases or something like that so 
Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I'm quarantined in my truck 22 hours a day, generally. Uh, maybe more than that. Maybe a little less than that. So, um, And I just stay here. And you're kind of getting to see the world from my perspective. So, Which isn't a whole lot. I just... It's all right here. Out the side windows and right here. So, um, anyway, just... You know, keep everybody in your thoughts and prayers. If you do thoughts and prayers. Um, if you don't, just think positive. I had a cousin. Uh, died a few years ago. Really good guy. And uh, he used to say good vibes. Good vibes, you know, good vibes to you. So, um, if you don't do thoughts and prayers, which uh, a lot of people don't, uh, then send good vibes to everybody at this point. So, and that way, uh, maybe, you know, we'll get through this. We'll definitely get through this. Uh, we're going to remember it, though. That's for sure. <laughs> so, anyway, that's it. Keep trying to set up. See you down the road.